السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ چلڈرین ہاؤ یو ٹوڈے آئی ہوپ اینڈ پرے دیٹ یو وڈ بی فائن اینڈ ریکگنائزنگ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ اینڈ ڈے بائی ڈے یو وڈ بی انکریزنگ ان یور لو فار اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ یو آلسو وڈ بی ریفلیکٹنگ اینڈ نوٹسنگ آل دا بلیسنگس آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ اراؤنڈ یو یو ول بی تھینک فل اینڈ گریٹ فل سروینس آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ ان شاء اللہ Today, dear kids, let's begin with the 12th Jews of the Quran and recognize our mighty Lord. Let's look at Ayah 7 of Surah Hud. And it is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days, and His throne had been upon water, that He might test you as to which of you is the best in deeds. But if Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, you should say, Indeed, you are resurrected after death. Those who disbelieve will surely say, This is not but obvious magic. Dear kids, we can see from this ayah that we are told again that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the earth and the skies in six days. Dear kids, we can see from this ayah that we are told again that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the earth and the sky in six days. But before the creation of earth and the sky, there was water and Allah's throne was over this. This means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's dominion was over the water. Then the water started heating up, it boiled and gases were released. Evaporation took place and soon the earth started becoming a solid. Then it started raining and it rained for many lakh years and the earth started to shrink. Now, due to this, from some places it became high and from others it became low. The same rain led to the formation of oceans, seas and rivers. At that time, no living creation lived on earth. Either they were mountains or water. Then from swamps emerged minerals, animals and plants. Dear kids, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us that, O oh man, I did not make you aimless without any goals, but the aim was to see which one of you would exceed in doing good deeds. Deeds according to the Quran and Sunnah, sincere deeds, deeds done solely to gain Allah's pleasure. Obviously, only that person will do good deeds, will strive, make an effort to be good, who believes in the day of judgment, who knows and has firm faith that there is accountability and there is everlasting life in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that when the disbelievers are told to accept Islam, lead their lives according to the Quran and Sunnah, they simply turn around and tell the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that you must be speaking under the influence of magic. Or what fictional story is this? What sorcery is this? Is this possible that we can be brought to life after we have died? And then we will be held accountable for our deeds? This is simply not possible and we refuse to accept it. Dear kids, from this ayah, we find out the wisdom, the might and the omnipotence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not created anything in this world without a reason and due to this, accountability will be taken, life will be resurrected and day of judgment will be established. Whenever we are making something new, we try to do something for the first time. It can be a bit hard or challenging, but when you repeat the process, it is very easy, isn't it kids? Same way, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already created man, why would it be tough for Allah to recreate? In comparison to man, making the earth and the sky seems like a daunting job, but when Allah could do that effortlessly, so why would making man be difficult for Allah? Allah. Therefore, we should do everything. All our deeds should be done to gain Allah's pleasure. All deeds according to the commands of Allah so we can receive reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay away from all sins so we can protect ourselves from the scary hellfire. Moving on kids, let's look at Surah Yusuf, Ayah number 3. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We relate to you, O Muhammad, the best of stories and what we have revealed to you of this Quran, although you were before it among the unaware. 
Dear kids, we learn a lot about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this verse. In this entire world, the best narrations and the true narrations come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, we should not get fascinated with the worldly stories and dramas. We should avoid watching movies, stories or dramas as these are lies and lies are not allowed in Islam. Second thing we find out is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the knowledge of the unknown. Even the prophets of Allah did not have this knowledge of the unseen. Only limited amount of knowledge was given to the prophets. As much knowledge as Allah willed. Only that much the prophets knew. And so is true for the people on earth. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has complete knowledge. Now kids, let's look at ayah number 22 of Surah Yusuf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And when Yusuf reached maturity, we gave him judgment and knowledge, and thus we reward the doer of good. Dear kids, we can also see something very special about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this verse. We see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted Yusuf alayhi salam prophethood, wisdom and knowledge when he reached the age of maturity. We can see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed a set time for everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives man blessings according to a fixed and appointed time. Nothing comes before and nothing comes after the appointed time. The second thing we see is that when we see or notice that a certain person is very intelligent or very beautiful, then we need to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not the person, because all this is due to Allah's blessings and favors. The third thing we find out from this verse is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not let the reward of people who do ihsan go waste. People who are benevolent, generous and kind, their efforts are rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who does ihsan is called a muhsin. A muhsin is such a person who does good in response to bad. For example, if a person bothers you, is not kind to you, or does not benefit you, even then you will be kind to them. Such is the behavior of a Mohsin. And now let's talk about how can we adopt Ihsan with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say our namaz, we say our salah in such a manner that we imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listening and we are standing in front of Allah. We are mindful of every action, every verse, every prostration. Dear kids, let's end today's discussion with the sincere dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us of the Mohsins. Ameen. Alhamdulillah, we have come to the end of the 12th juz of the Quran. Till next time, look after yourselves and remember to be good and follow the Quran and Sunnah, inshallah. Till then, dear kids, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.